me show you something from Romans 8. In Romans chapter 8, it says, All who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but have received the spirit have received, sorry, the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. Now, in the context of Romans 8, uh, there's two groups of people, people who live according to the flesh and people who live by the spirit. And Paul says, if you live by the the, the spirit, you, you'll live. But it, um, but if you live by the flesh, you're going to die. Um and he says, for all who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. So in Paul's world, dude, not everyone is led by the Spirit. Not everyone lives by the Spirit. Some people live by the flesh. But the ones who do live by the Spirit, those are the sons of God. And Paul says, you didn't, you didn't receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. Now, um, there's an obvious question here. Why would God adopt us if we are already his literal sons and daughters? If we are literal sons and daughters of a heavenly mother and heavenly father, uh, universally uh, via a premortal union between our parents, then there doesn't seem to be any need for him to adopt us. So I've, I have heard some LDS people say, well, maybe it's Christ who adopted us and Christ becomes our father. And that's what Paul's referring to here is that we were not we were once not sons of Christ and now metaphorically we have become adopted as sons such that Christ is our father now and now we can call him Abba Father. Uh, this is complicated by common LDS usage of Romans 8:16 which says the spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Now in my experience uh, this passage has always been used by LDS leadership, LDS manuals and culture and so forth to mean that we are literal spirit children of heavenly parents, that we universally, all of us are children of God. And this passage is used to support that. So what I typically do is I say, well, is that talking about literal universal pre, uh, premortal sonship or is that referring to adoptive sonship? So we just go back to 8, 6, 815. This is talking about adoption. So that, of course, raises the question, is it the Father adopting us or is it Christ? Uh, I'd like to uh, show you that this is clearly talking about the Father adopting us. Um, sons of God. Just uh, one observation here to start with is that Paul overwhelmingly, and with perhaps only one exception in chapter 9, by default, Paul, when he refers to God, he's referring to God the Father. And that's a... Uh, an exegetical or an interpretive uh, claim I'm making that you're you're free to, to test. When Paul refers to God, is he by default referring to the Father? The other thing here too is that um, we, having been adopted as children, uh, just side note here, I do believe the LDS Church has and its culture has uh, very much misused this passage as referring to adoption, not to premarital sonship. But um, we, having become adoptive children, are now heirs. We are heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ. And there's this expectation that the normal Christian life passes through suffering. The suffering is with Christ and it results in being glorified with Christ. Anyway, we are heirs of God as adoptive children in Christ and fellow heirs with Christ. This is another tip here, another flag or sign that Paul is thinking here of being adopted by the Father and into a, a adoptive brotherhood with Christ. God has become our adoptive father. Christ has become our brother. Now, um, another uh, signal here uh, in the same chapter that I uh, would ask you to look at is in uh, chapter 8, verse 29, it says, For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined 
to be conformed to the image of his son, singular, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. So uh, he planned it out so that we would be conformed to the image of his son, singular, his son, in order that Christ, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. So the, the, the big idea here is that um, we become heirs of God, we become adoptive children of God, and we become fellow heirs and we become adoptive brothers with Christ uh, by faith in Christ, uh, marked by our walking by the Spirit, not by the flesh, marked by our suffering with Christ and later being glorified with him. It even says uh, in Romans chapter 8, um, let's see this liberation. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm looking for this verse here. Where's the verse? It says, uh, okay, creation, uh, not only creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the spirit grown inwardly as we await eagerly for adoption as sons. So another, another tip here that Paul is thinking here of adoption. Um, but I think the verse I'm actually thinking about is where it says that creation's um, waiting for the the revealing of the sons. I'm probably staring at it right now. I'm not, not seeing it. Um, it's in Romans chapter eight. Okay. Another passage to show you, show you is first uh, John chapter three. Uh, in it, we see, see what kind of love the father has given us that we should be called children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. And what we will be has not yet appeared, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So that seeing him will result in a uh, really radical transformation. And now we know that we are God's, that, that now we are chil God's children now. But John sees this as an extraordinary claim or fact worth celebrating. Um, it's something the Father has given us. It's a love. And what, it, what, is, what is this love? That we should be called children of God. Now, uh, please read this closely with me. Paul, uh, John, John's not thinking about everyone when he says we, not universal. This is referring to the believers. Paul, uh, John says, the reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. The world doesn't know us, and it doesn't know Christ, but we, we're the ones who are called the children of God. We're, and that's, what a, what a gracious gift. Uh, that's a given love, uh, that we, having been adopted and rebirthed, are called the children of God. We are, we are called children of God. So in John's worldview, uh, we, we already saw this, uh, what we in the gospel of John, um, it says, uh, he came to his own and his own people did not receive him. There seems to be a double meaning here, his own, uh, because in John one, it says Christ created everything. So he came to his own creation and, uh, he came, and there's also this sense of his own Israelite people, the Hebrew people, the people of the old covenant. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. So the people you would expect that would receive him did not receive him. But to those who did receive him, to all who received him, who believed in his name. So what does it mean to receive him? To believe in his name. He gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So we become we we are given the right to become children of God uh, through believing in His name, receiving Him. This is John's theology that uh, we are not children, but we become children by faith in Christ. And and because of this reality is so incredible, and it's such an act of love, uh, 
people who believe that we're adopted by the Father can see can say, whoa, see, behold, we are called children of God as a gift. Uh, and the we here is the believers, not the whole world. Um, so please consider this. In John's and Paul's theology, uh, we are adopted by the Father through Christ. Uh, we're not adopted by Christ. We're adopted through Christ to the Father. And we become heirs and sons of God, adoptive sons. And we become co-heirs and brothers with Christ. Thanks for listening.